764 presents The player toy that video will be Hi there, once again, welcome to another Lemon64 Play Guide and Review. In this one, we'll be checking out Hero of the Golden Talisman 2, which was developed by Sean Southern and perhaps even Andrew Morris, and not released by Mastertronic or any other company in 1980-whatever. I found this on Frank Gasking's uh, 64 Games That Weren't website, and check out the 64 Games That Weren't. And this was never released, and this was just a tweet to the Hero of the Golden Talisman formula. And in this mission, we have been given the task of collecting a laser and attacking a base on the moon, and we have to pick up fruit for strength and shoot dinosaurs many times to destroy them, and all that kind of thing. So let's just press that fire button. The game begins with a nice animation of us landing in our spaceship and that reminds me of certain other famous games where we have to build a spaceship and that's definitely not this game because we can see that this is very much inspired by the Impossible Mission games as Sean Sutton really admitted he loved the character and so he wanted the character to walk and run around a bit like that game. And this one, it's a bit of a maze, and some of these things lead to dead ends, which isn't too bad, because at least we know that is not the way to go. And if you notice in the bottom corner, we have STR, which I presume is stamina, or strength, probably is more likely. Strength is at 91%, and that's our energy level, and that was our health. And the air you can see is zero, I'm not quite sure, but I think we need air a little bit later on. You can see the climbing on offer is pretty much similar to the other game, but the swimming you can see we now do the crawl instead of the breaststroke or whatever type of swimming we did on the original Hero of the Golden Talisman game. And so this is maybe an update or a patch or a new release of the game, but it was felt that it wasn't interesting enough, so they didn't release it. And this is the very first time I've ever seen or played this game, so I've no idea where I'm going. But somewhere around this maze, there will be a dragon, and there will be something to help me complete that mission and kill the dragon a lot easier. You can see a key, but unfortunately the key is behind the door, and so we'll have to find our way towards another way to open that door. And so you can see random things attack from the edge of the screen, and when you shoot those, more random things will appear. This being a maze, sometimes the rooms look awfully familiar and so it is possible to get lost. And I'm not sure that there are any maps available for this game because it was unreleased. But I'm going to bumble my way through it and this was recorded quite some years ago, the very first time I played it. And yes, you can see that unfortunately it suffers from what I like to call the switchblade ladder problem, which is, well, it looks like we have to jump onto ladders to get us to climb onto them, otherwise perhaps you have to be pixel perfect. And if you don't do that, sometimes you can bounce your way all the way down again. I'm not quite sure if you lose any health by doing that, 
And you can see pots of gold in the bottom corner and pockets where we can hopefully collect a few items that we found dotted around the level. My technique is usually to avoid the enemies as much as possible and shoot into them and just keep moving as much as possible and hopefully by trial and error it's possible to find your way around the maze and find out where you're supposed to be going at any given point. And if you can find the exit gate to any one of these levels then you know that's definitely the way to go and so opening the exit gate or finding the end of level monster is a really good pathfinder and you can hopefully backtrack from there but in this game you have to find keys and keys open gates and sometimes you have to wander around trying to find those and in finding them you have to go all the way back again so we found the yellow key to the yellow door that we found earlier on so now it's a memory test can we find our way all the way back again and let's see if we do lose health well it appears that we don't lose considerable health by falling and that's a really great thing because who needs that in one of these games so i think it was along the bottom somewhere so let's by luck or by judgment head in that direction and let's see what we can find Well, it appears that we've found the green door. If only we had a green door key, then we could get through it. And the green door is blocking our way, it looks like, towards the second half of this level. And the levels in this game are huge, and I'm not absolutely sure how many there are in this game. But I don't think that there's just the one, because we're probably going to get to the second level at some point in this play guide. So you can see the enemies, it's possible to avoid most of those and if you find some health it's possible to leave that until you really need it. I've played this a few times, you can see we're now dropping down to the area that I found earlier on. So hopefully, even though we've still got three quarters of our health remaining, we can figure out how to do this. Maybe we have to hold down the fire and then maybe pull down to activate that. And so the key in this case is not a key shape, it's just something that says key on it. So that gives us a futuristic look, a retro Pac-Man or a Mrs. Pac-Man there to make life a lot more interesting. And you can see the enemies on offer, there are a huge variety. They haven't just created the same old drums, they have used their imagination. And there are a few quirks and funny features in the game, just like Pac-Men and Pac-Women. And those things moving around really does give a quirky character to this game so i found a key so i'm hoping that that might open the green door well i guess there's only one way to find it out people that like exploring this is definitely an explorer map and so I guess if you can memorize this first level you can get all the way through it I have no idea where I'm going but this looks nice so I'm gonna follow this and see where it takes me you can see it's led to some fruit which will be helpful to get some energy back so this game does lead the player in cans of coke not leading to any product placement whatsoever Would I rate this game? Well, I'd say this might be slightly harder than the original game and it seems to have lots of rooms in it so i definitely give this a high score obviously they haven't really developed the idea but you can see we've reached that end of level monster so we get pretty similar things to the original game and i'm not quite sure but i think in the original game weren't these dragons and this thing looks like a dinosaur but 
maybe this is a time travel game. You can time your way through these projectiles if I can do a half decent job of it. Simply duck under most of them, it looks like, and then you can lay into the boss. So that hopefully is the first boss over with, and I'm not quite sure if it gives us how far we've got in the game. But find a blue door, and that's the only way to go. So at this point in the game, holding our hand and saying, well, we only have the one way out, and this is it. And I scream comes, licking the bottom of the player. And for that, we get some extra energy. So I give this game pretty high marks, even though the formula doesn't really change much to fans of this game series, or at least one released. Then I'd say this is pretty good. So personally, I'd probably give this uh, at least a 6 out of 10, probably more than that, if you like these types of games. I mean, don't forget, adventures back in the day were often type-in text adventures, and this is a proper arcade game. I won't go as far as to say that this is Indiana Jones, but it was probably inspired by all those types of games. I do like the swimming on Afro, and I do like the fact that we can hold our breath for, it seems, quite a long time. And I think that you can emerge from the water to get our breath back and certainly sacks of air I notice are available as well so this has got weird things going on for it we can find 10p pieces in the game we can find the man that runs and we can find lots of multi-screen action so it's not boring but it is difficult and when you don't know the way to go just like this you could be running into a blind alley and I guess the one thing I can say about it is you don't get that much health unless you know it is. And at this point we only have a fraction of the health left. So I'm struggling and the air seems to be now going down. It's on these long stretches. It reminds me of the New Zealand story where we have to flap around and manage to get out in time. Not quite sure whether this was in the original game. Neither are Pac-Man ghosts. You can see some of those have been drawn in a higher resolution and that makes it really playable. The player doesn't even die after 20 odd seconds in the water, which makes it again very playable. If only I can find the exit and hopefully here it is. So that's me at a dead end in the game and that's probably where I'm going to leave this review. So thank you once again for viewing this. Uh, I think the game is definitely playable, it could have been released as a budget price and the music and sound effects are basic of course, but look at that. There you go. So thanks again for reviewing this play guide to a game that never even came out and you can download this for free on the C64 games that weren't website and I definitely re recommend this game amongst all the lots and lots of games which sadly were cancelled. So this is Heritage on the Commodore 64 and so hope to see you again in another player guide at some point sometime soon. Thank you.